Welcome to Out and About magazine. We are down here at 99 Sushi Bar in Abu Dhabi, and we're here with the lovely Chef Tinas, <laughs> who is the executive chef who's just won a Michelin star that is at correct. the recent Abu Dhabi Michelin star reveal. Welcome. Thank you very much. Glad to have you guys here. Now, we're exploring Abu Dhabi, and it's such a great opportunity to be sitting with you having just won a Michelin star. <laughs> now, we want to get to know a little bit more about you. So sure. tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, so myself, um, been cooking for about 17 years, always wanted to be a chef. Um, been ingrained from my father to mentors over the years. Um, it's, it's always been a passion. And I, that's very important for me is to, you know, live your passion, otherwise it becomes more of a job and I kind of, you know, I'm not a nine to five guy in an office. I'm a guy who likes to be in the kitchen, likes to be in the restaurant and just the life of hospitality, so. Now you traveled here from South Africa. Yes. Um, we're in Abu Dhabi, looking out at the beautiful scenery. Can you tell us a little bit about your Abu Dhabi story and why you wanted to come to Abu Dhabi? So I started to come to, I was working for Anantara um, about seven years ago. I was working for Anantara in Mozambique. Um, and I did an internal transfer, really wanted to work at Kasar al Sarab, you know, because that at that time was the flagship of Anantara. Um, so it was very important for me to go there. Um, and that's, yeah, that's how I got here. Started living in the middle of the desert, and then I moved to Dubai to have some city, city life, you know, because to go from an island to the middle of the desert is quite a, you know, secluded place. And then I went to Dubai for a bit, and then Abu Dhabi just came calling again, you know. And I love it. People ask normally, what do you like more, Abu Dhabi or Dubai? For me, it's Abu Dhabi, man. It's, uh, it's always been, yeah. That's both of us, that's <laughs> for sure. 12 years in Abu Dhabi, yeah. absolutely love living in Abu Dhabi. Now, 99 Sushi, you came, you conquered. Yes. Got the Michelin star. Yeah. Tell us about that experience and what getting a Michelin star means to you. For us, it's, it's a culmination of a lot of effort. Um, once we got the Michelin star, or once we got the invitation from Michelin, we didn't even know Michelin was coming to Abu Dhabi, right? So for us to even be nominated was incredible, seeing as um, we were just doing 99. We were just doing what we do. Um, so there was no, oh, Michelin is coming, you know, maybe they are here in the restaurant, maybe they are not, let's put, you know, extra flair. It was just us and the staff just doing what we're doing. Um, and when we won that 99, the Michelin star, obviously, I think most of the people saw the videos, um, and we went absolutely ecstatic, you know. So it's a lot of effort, a lot of hours that we put into this. So it was, it was wonderful, it was wonderful, you know. It was amazing to be there and to actually see you and to see your reaction, yeah. because I could tell that you were just, you didn't know for sure, and <laughs> that was your natural reaction. Yes, yeah. Now, can you tell me a little bit about what it takes, uh, what goes into putting together a menu that earns you a Michelin star? I think firstly, it comes to the quality of the products you use, um, the techniques that you use. You know, we, we put a lot of effort into me and the staff, especially, you know, from the sushi bar and from the hot kitchen, um, to really work on techniques, you know, to have as a standard base a Japanese food, but to give it a little bit of, we call it Spanish flair, right? Um, to do what they do, but to do a little bit more modern, a little bit different. And as I say, if you use the base, I mean, most of our product, we fly in from Japan. Our tuna, we fly in from Balfago, Spain, twice a week. You know, this gets flown in fresh. So it's all about the freshness, the quality of the product um, that we give to our guests, you know, and obviously the technique. And let's not forget our service as well. You know, the service is top class. And it has to be, you know, so um, we proud ourselves in, in doing exactly that. Now, Japanese cuisine or Japanese style restaurants, yeah. a lot of them have been popping up, yeah. especially in this region. Can yes. you say why that is? I think, it, I think it's a lot moving along with trends that's happening. Um, people are also looking for healthier foods, you know, of which Japanese food is one. Um, they're also looking for um, fresh products. They are, they're looking for what Japanese is. Is the, you can see the Japanese culture when they approach food as well as with respect and with a, a certain kind of dignity. 
you know, and people love that kind of service as well that they get. So once that's especially now that they're using their own culture, say Peruvian or for us in this case Spanish, um, it's good to combine those two, you know, so you move a little bit away from the tra traditional and it's new, you know, it's sparkling, it's something that uh, pulls people towards your restaurant, you know, uh, saying you're, you're a little bit on the gravel road rather than going on the straight and narrow forward to what everybody's doing. And I think that pulls a lot of customers or clients to your restaurant. And if you do it well, you know, it makes it even better. You get a Michelin star. You get a Michelin star, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, from your personal standpoint, you know, what's your favorite type of food to cook and to eat? Um, so I've been asked this a couple of times now, so because that's a question every chef wants to answer, right? Um, for me, especially as coming from South Africa, um, anything that's been cooked on a fire, you know, I have a, it's a, a kind of level of expertise high above because we've been doing it from a very young age, you know. Um, I've, Japanese has always had a place in my heart, so I love the way that it's being presented and I love the fine techniques and especially the Kobe that we use, the A5 beef, uh, you know, in South Africa, especially the way I grew up, chicken is a vegetable. <laughs> you know, so anything with meat, is, you, have, you have my heart's desire locked in, right? Um, that's not saying, because I love cooking on fire, the versatility of vegetables can also be used in certain ways, you know. Um, we've just introduced our robata grills on our menu, you know, so we introduce a certain kind of flair when it comes to the smoke, you know, because that also plays a big, big um, way in how the flavor is presented. Um, we have a couple of flambéed makis and flambéed nigiris, um, which is also we introduce flame or smoke or you know different kind of textures. We also have a new item where we take Japanese tree oak uh, binchutan charcoal and we sear nigiri with that. So you know it makes it, it introduces that flavor of smoke, just makes it so much better. I can see how happy you are when you're talk talking about, what about you it. Do. It's, it's amazing and it's lovely yeah. because you're really passionate about what you do. Yeah. Now, when are you happiest? When I'm in the kitchen. I like to, I like to joke, well, we joke with the guys and say, our house is just the place where I go visit. This is my house. You know, this is where I live. Um, like I say, I've, I've, I've moved a couple of years ago, I moved away from the kitchen to work in coffee. Um, for two years because it was just a very interesting world for me, the world of coffee. Um, and then after two years, I had to go back to the kitchen because it's something that, it's, it's a part of you, you know, it's something, and the brigade of a kitchen, you know, my father was in the military, my uncles were in the military, you know, so it's, it's that way of growing up, it's what we have in the kitchen as, as well, you know, that level of brigade, respect that chefs have to, for each other. You know, especially in this country with all the nationalities that are working with each other. But that's what I love about the kitchen. That rush, you know, that's where my heart is for sure. That's interesting. Yeah. Is that, that is very interesting because you see, you, you feel like you felt like you wanted to move away. Like something else was calling you, but your passion pulled yes. you back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it was, uh, I, I think there was one stage where somebody asked me, do you want to go back in the kitchen? And I started bawling my eyes out because of that, you know. I'm like, yes, please, let me go. Let me go back to the kitchen. So, yeah, it was, I, rem I remember that moment like it was yesterday. That's amazing. Now, you told me something that was extremely, I, have, I want to say, enlightening about you mm. and just looking at your journey to see where you are now. Yeah. Um, just tell us a little bit about that and what life lessons you've learned along the way. So, yeah, the, I call it a little speed bump because I feel like uh, it was, a, a, funny enough, on this day, uh, eight years ago, I had brain cancer, right? Um, and it was diagnosed into a stage three tumor. And I, I'm a, I love golf, so that's my closest reference that I can have. So the tumor was as big as a golf ball. Um, and I had, was diagnosed on the Wednesday. The surgery was on the Friday. I was two weeks in hospital and then the doctor wanted to start chemo and the radiation uh, and I said hold on because it's my first time in six years that I'm at home with the family that I can do Christmas and New Year's you know and that's a special time for chefs because we don't tend we tend to miss those times you know because when everybody's having a holiday a chef works the most um, yeah and you know after that I had to do six weeks of chemo I was out of work for about 
um, eight months. And with Anatara being the company it is, they were paying my salary every month, so I was very lucky in that regard. Um, and they were taking care of my medical bills as well, so I was very, very happy. Uh, I didn't have any stress while going through the whole process. And I like to say I handled it like a, like a cold, you know. Um, I know every cancer case is case to case basis, but for me it was uh, the way I handle it is the way the people around me will handle it. So I handle it like a cold, you know. I don't, let's just get this over and done with and then and that's how everybody else took it rather than you know going sitting in the corner crying about it and feeling sorry for myself you know change your mentality in your head and that's pretty much how I tackle anything at this stage and I stopped planning 10 years ahead you know I stopped planning five years ahead there's a big picture but it's not that important what important is what we do now and what we live now so yeah and that's something that I will take away today. <laughs> you know, stop planning so far ahead. Live each day and you know, focus yes. on each yeah. moment. Yeah. And how are you today? Today, luckily, I'm very happy to say I do. Uh, I've got very good. We got very good doctors in this country, um, and clear for eight eight years now. Uh, nothing's come back. Um, you know, so I'm very very happy in that regard, and that I can still do what I love without the hindrance of uh, something medically related. Alhamdulillah. We'll yes, never touch, yeah. return. touch wood, like we say. Yes. <laughs> now, so you don't want to plan too far ahead? No. Next two to five years. Sure. What do you see yourself doing? Well, in the immediate plan for us, for us here at 99 is if we can get one star, why not look for two, right? That's always that's always the the challenge, because um, you can also lose a mission and star as quick as you get it, right? So for us, that's our main focus at the moment. Um, within the next five years, I, like I say, I will just uh, we just do what we do. Um, if opportunities come my way and it's the right and I feel right about it, I'll grab it. But I'm very happy where we, where are, where we are now with 99 Sushi, and I'm very happy with the team that we work with. You know, we work like a family. Um, 99 as a group has obviously international goals that we want to achieve um, and those are working. We're actually um, doing um, Rabat is opening in December in Morocco, you know, so and then the next year there's a few other plans happening. Um, so 99 as a group, has, uh, there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of place to grow. So with that regard, I see myself with the 99 family. Um, um, and being with them, I don't see myself moving on yet. You know, I, I, I really, and we want to keep the star as much as possible as well. Yeah. So. Now, how do you get two stars? How do you get from one to two? I think that's where your service comes into play as well. Um, you know, we, we work on a little bit more on the food, see what techniques we can improve, see what new trends are coming in, you know, so you keep up with the trends. Um, but for the second star, for sure, that's where the service comes in, that's where the wineness comes in, um, the knowledge of um, the staff that we have and how they approach. And if you can, I think the biggest thing for Michelin is to see the love in the staff and how they present. You know, that's why they, the first star is all about the signature, the chef, and if you can see his identity. Um, and I think when the service comes back, that's when you go for the, for the second star. So we'll just try our best and see where we go. Now we look forward to the next yes. Michelin star reveal yes. then and inshallah yes. you'll be collecting, you'll be even happier yeah, than yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, we'll wait to see that reaction when we get there because <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen when I do, yeah. I'm sure it will be fantastic. No? <laughs> Thank you so much, Very Chef welcome. Tinas, for having us down here. Congratulations on the Michelin star. And we look forward to seeing you winning even more Michelin stars and just being such a positive energy. It's been so great being down here. Thank you. It was lovely to chat to you as well. Thank you so much.